All right. Um, well, I think we can go ahead and get started now that it looks like uh, most of the registered participants are here. Um, so hello, and thank you all for joining us for CSUSB's History Department graduation and Phi Alpha Theta induction ceremony for the fall of 2020. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Professor Michael Cart. Uh, I teach courses on California and United States history at CSUSB's Palm Desert campus. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the History Department, let me open our program by expressing our heartfelt congratulations to all the graduates. We are full of pride as we mark this occasion. Your hard work has paid off and you are college graduates. And this is no small thing, but a reflection of your intelligence, tenacity, and industriousness. College always throws many challenges in the path of students, but the circumstances of the last year have created an especially bumpy road. Yet you have achieved your goals. Please give yourselves a round of applause. And to the parents, family, and friends of our graduates, this is also a day for you to celebrate. Your support and encouragement have contributed to this graduation. In addition, this evening's program will honor our newest inductees to Phi Alpha Theta, a national honor society for the study of history. This includes both graduating students and continuing students. And therefore, it's this truly joyous occasion and we're happy that you have joined us. To start our formal proceeding, our next speaker will be Professor Daisy Ocampo, who will give the CSUSB land acknowledgement. Hi, good evening, everyone. I am Professor Daisy Ocampo, and I teach courses in public history and Native American history. It is my honor today to give Cal State San Bernardino's land acknowledgement statement. These statements allow institutions such as CSUSB to honor the numerous native nations past and present who have cared for these lands. Land is not merely a space that we occupy as people. It is also an activated landscape for culture, stories, histories, and traditions. As historians who continually reflect on how our present is shaped by the past, it is fitting that we take a moment to acknowledge the indigenous people of the lands where CSUSB now resides. The official CSUSB land acknowledgement states, we recognize that California State University San Bernardino sits on the territory and ancestral lands of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. We recognize that every member of the California State University San Bernardino community has benefited and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since the institution's founding in 1965. Consistent with our values of community and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to native peoples. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and we will work to hold California State University San Bernardino more accountable to the needs of American Indians and indigenous peoples. This concludes the land acknowledgement. Now our next speaker will be Professor Kate Liska. Thank you again. Um, thank you, Daisy. And, and thank you all for coming for your attendance today to this graduation and induction ceremony. Building off what Dr. Karp was saying earlier today, I have the privilege of giving you some additional words of welcome. So my name is Professor Kate Liska, and I teach courses on world history in ancient Egypt. And this graduation and induction are a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the success of our students and by extension, the entire department. To the students out there, we the faculty and staff really wish that we could be in person with you to share this special time. I mean, we do know how hard you've worked. Um, we applaud all of your dedication and your sacrifice and despite this online format of this event. We really hope that our joy, the joy that we feel doesn't seem distant or virtual at all um, because we are genuinely delighted to see your success. You really have persevered 
you haven't given up, you've remained focused on your goals, and now you're graduating from CSUSB. So we can only imagine the many great achievements that are ahead for each of and every one of you too. Similarly, we, for those of you joining uh, Phi Alpha Theta and those of you who are already members, who are already members, you are a credit to our department. We couldn't be more proud of you. And it's no wonder that our chapter of Phi Alpha Theta has won best chapter in our division from this national organization in 2019 and also five of the last six years too. It's because CSUSB has some of the best and the brightest history students. So let me congratulate all of our new Phi Alpha Thetans as well. And also I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Xavier Resendez, who is a student representative of the history department. Xavier. Hello, fellow Yodis, families and friends. My name is Xavier Resendez and I am the vice president of the history club and the Alpha Delta Nu chapter of Phi Alpha Theta at CSUSB. On behalf of the club and my fellow student leaders, let me congratulate all the graduating students and new Phi Alpha Theta honorees. As a history major, I know the late nights and long papers and other challenges of being a history student, it's not easy. And our faculty certainly challenge us every day. Before the COVID shutdown, we CSUSB students commonly had to contend with traffic jams and difficulty of finding parking. Now it's the slow internet and choppy Zoom connections. So the fact that you all overcame these burdens and achieved your goals is truly special. Make sure to take the time to savor this moment and celebrate your unique milestones. And to the returning CSUSB students, good job on earning admittance into Phi Alpha Theta. And we invite you to become more involved in History Club at the CSUSB chapter of Pat Alpha Data New. To the graduates, best of luck. Your futures look very bright. Our next speaker will be Professor Mark Robinson. Thank you, Xavier. Um, OK, so now we're going to do the actual ritual of induction. Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to read the official statement, which includes a bit of history about the organization um, and some other information. Uh, then it gives uh, these three ideals. And so once I get to the ideals, you'll know for the new inductees, your part is coming up. So um, I'll read the ideals and then I'll ask a question, you know, do you accept the striving for promoting these ideals? When I ask that question, not that time when I do it the next time, um, you will say I. Um, ideally, you would unmute yourself and say I so we can all hear you, or you could just say I to yourself. Um, and then once you say I, after I ask the question, then you will be inducted. So uh, let's get started. All right, so um, as was said, uh, my name is Professor Mark Robinson. Uh, I am a faculty member here and I teach courses on US history and African-American history. And it is my honor to lead this official ritual of induction. On behalf of the Alpha Delta Nu chapter of Phi Alpha Theta, I would like to welcome you to our initiation of new members. Today, we are celebrating the achievement of those students who have excelled in their study of history. With us today are the current members of Phi Alpha Theta, the new members and their family and friends, and others from the California State University San Bernardino community who value the pursuit of historical knowledge. Phi Alpha Theta is a national honor society in history. It was organized at the University of Arkansas in 1921. And since then, it has grown to more than 820 chapters. The membership of Pi Alpha Theta is composed of students and faculty who have been elected to membership on the basis of excellence in the study of writing, in the study and writing of history. It is highly democratic, however, in that any student of history may become a member simply by maintaining a high standard of work in their studies. In addition, all the members participate in the work and direction of the society. Phi Alpha Theta is a professional society which promotes the study of history through the encouragement of research, good teaching, publication, and the exchange of learning among historians in a variety of ways. It seeks to bring students and faculty together, both intellectually and socially, 
for mutual understanding and encouragement of their common interests in the study of history. As new members, you will be expected to live up to the ideals of Pi Alpha Theta, keeping in mind the three important forces contained in the words philia, anthropos, theos, love, humanity, God. Among the valuable lessons that may be learned from the study of history and the ideals of the society, they are, so these ideals are, one, the spirit of respect, which fosters a sincere regard for the rights of each individual. Two, the belief in the community of all persons, which renders abhorrent all ideas that tend to foment national hatreds, racial and sexual discrimination, or other forms of injustice. Three, the need for historians to search for truth and to accept the responsibility for making decisions in terms of their meaning for others as well as for themselves. All right, so here's the big question. Do you, new inductees, accept the challenge of striving to live up to these ideals of Pi Alpha Theta? Pi alpha theta? If so, please say aye. 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 With, with that, I am pleased to welcome you as newly initiated members of the Alpha Delta New Chapter of Pi Alpha Theta. Congratulations. Our next speaker will be Dr. Ryan Keating, Professor Keating. Good evening, I'm Ryan Keating and I teach courses on the 19th century United States and the Civil War. As we continue to recognize our newest Pi Alpha Thetans, I would like to now introduce a special guest speaker who's joining us tonight, the National Phi Alpha Theta President, Dr. Jacob Blosser. Dr. Blosser is Professor of History and Director of Graduate Study in History and Political Science at Texas Women's University. He teaches courses on colonial and revolutionary America, the Atlantic world and early modern Europe. Dr. Blosser is particularly interested in religious history, popular culture, and the history of the book. He holds degrees in history from the University of South Carolina, James Madison University, and Milligan College. Dr. Blosser has advised the at a new chapter of Phi Alpha Theta at Texas Women's University since 2007 and is the founder of the university's student history journal, IBN. In 2019, he was appointed to the Texas Undergraduate Education Advisory Committee, the state's leading voice on undergraduate education. Blosser's research has appeared in Church History, the Virginia Magazine of History and Biography, Episcopal History, and the South Carolina Historical Review. He enjoys traveling both in this country and abroad and has visited more than, this is very impressive, uh, on top of all of his other prestigious work, more than 200 national parks. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Blosser, uh, for joining us, and you uh, now have the floor. Thank you so much, Professor Keating. I'm delighted to be with you this evening. Um, tonight is a really exciting night. Tonight, your new members uh, join our National Society, our Phi Alpha Theta. Phi Alpha Theta has more than 400,000 members, more than 900 chapters around the country, and tonight you join our family. More importantly, tonight you join a really good chapter. I am just delighted. I wanna thank uh, Professor Karp for the invitation. I'm so happy to, to be uh, with the Alpha Delta new, Delta new chapter. This is a chapter that's been on my radar screen for a, a long time. Uh, you all are doing wonderful things. The national office has recognized you for many years as being one of our best chapters in the whole country. And of course, I'm, I'm well aware of your wonderful journal, History in the Making. Um, there's some good news uh, coming your way. I'm not able to share that right now, um, but uh, the national office is the one that breaks those, those news, that news, but there's good news uh, coming your way very soon uh, from last year's competition. Congratulations to, to all that were um, involved in, in uh, the, that wonderful, wonderful journal. Tonight, uh, also, in addition to, to joining our society, tonight, I think most importantly, one of the oldest and largest honor societies in the United States recognize, recognizes you uh, for your superlative achievements in history. 
We recognize you for asking difficult and creative questions, for searching for answers in libraries and archives, and for presenting your works in professional venues, uh, papers, conference papers, for example, and um, um, presentations. You've distinguished yourselves as students of history, and Phi Alpha Theta is delighted to welcome you into membership. I encourage you to take full benefit of all that membership uh, comes with it. Uh, perhaps the, the greatest thing that Phi Alpha Theta can provide is confidence. When I became president a year ago, it seems like 10 years now with COVID, but when, when I became president in January uh, of last year, I launched a, uh, a national presidential initiative devoted to inspiring confidence, because I think that's the best thing that Phi Alpha Theta has done for over 100 years. We, we turn 100 uh, years uh, next year. And this presidential initiative was all about celebrating a century of student confidence. And this initiative reminds us that um, as our society celebrates its 100th birthday, uh, our greatest asset remains the confidence that we as an organization instill into our members through conferences, through the events that we hold. Phi Alpha Theta truly is an organization that for 100 years has cultivated and inspired each new generation of historians. And I hope that you will take confidence in the good work that you have done and that you will believe in your abilities to uh, do superlative work in the future. Um, I encourage you to submit the work, uh, perhaps a past paper, perhaps a paper you're going to write in the coming term. I encourage you to submit that to one of our upcoming regional conferences. All of our regional conferences in 2021 have gone virtual. Uh, there are lots of opportunities. Each seems each week I learn of a new conference uh, that's gone virtual. Many of them are open to people across the country. Uh, soon there'll be a list of all of these available at filetheta.org. You can find a virtual conference. I would encourage you to, to attend from the comfort of your living room. You can present uh, your, your research. File Theta regional conferences, of course, are one of the great ways that we inspire confidence in our members. Uh, I also encourage you to uh, investigate all the opportunities that the National Society provides, uh, scholarships, paper prizes, a whole host of wonderful things that you can participate in uh, at phialphatheta.org. Finally, I encourage you in the coming days uh, to think about those individuals, those professors, many of whom are on this call, those family members who might be joining you now, those friends, roommates, any number of people who have supported you in the past and have helped get you to this moment. I encourage you to think about those folks. And more importantly, I encourage you to pick up the telephone or send them an email. Uh, if you're like me, you'd write an old fashioned letter. I still write those. I'm probably the only person left in the country that does that. But uh, a future historian will thank me that I'm leaving a written record. So write a letter, write a note, um, uh, do something to say thank you to those people who read your papers right before they were due, who sp stayed up all night helping you study for that final, or, uh, or inspired confidence, confidence in you at a, a, a crucial moment. I would encourage you to, to thank them for the role that they played in your lives. Finally, a real fun thing I get to do is um, I was so excited when Professor Robinson told me that he was not going to read a part of the induction service that honestly is the most boring paragraph that's ever been written. It's a part of our induction service that talks about the symbolism of our society and all this stuff about symbols. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's okay, but um, I have a better way of presenting that information. Uh, as president, I get some bling. And one of the things I get is that the presidential medallion, and it has our uh, symbol on it, which you'll notice a six, uh, a six pointed star encircled by a snake. And so this is, this is a pretty cool symbol. This is a medallion. I will tell you, when they gave this to me, when I became president, I was so proud of this thing. I didn't want to take it off. I, I wanted to just wear it all night long. And the next morning, I put it on and I went down to breakfast. These are pre-COVID days. And so I got in the elevator. We're at a big hotel. And I had this medallion around. And I was in an elevator full of people that none of whom were at the conference, none of whom were at the four file for Athens. And this wonderful woman looked over at me and said, that's a wonderful medallion. I was about to tell her, yes, I'm president of Phi Alpha Theta. And she interrupted me and said, now what marathon did you run? <laughs> and suddenly I, you know, Phi Alpha Theta wasn't as cool as running a marathon. So, uh, so this is our, our symbol. But more, more exciting even than that, hold on, this is really cool. This is something you're only going to see from the president of Phi Alpha Theta. 
This is the national symbol of our organization. This is the thing that every president of the organization has had. It's passed down from president to president. You might think if a national symbol that the president might carry might be a scepter, it might be some kind of mace or something like that. Well, in Phi Alpha Theta, we, we do things a little differently. We, we give our presidents the ceremonial spoon, which I have here. This is the ultimate symbol of our society. Um, and uh, you won't find this written up in that boring <laughs> paragraph. Uh, this is the symbol of Phi Alpha Theta. You look on the back, it says the spoon of authority. And, and what is terribly ironic about this is we are an organization of professional historians and nobody has any idea why we have the spoon as a symbol, where it came from. We have no clue. We just know we pass it down from president to president to president. So with spoon in hand, as the president of our organization, let me welcome you most warmly to Phi Alpha Theta. Let me congratulate you on this important milestone in your lives. Let me also, uh, if ever I can be a service or the national office can be a service to you, please, by all means, contact me. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. In parting, just let me reiterate again uh, that uh, Phi Alpha Theta believes in you. You should believe in yourself. Take confidence in your abilities and know that our national organization organization is proud of all that you've done and all that you will do in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dr. Blosser. We truly appreciate you joining us and, and welcoming our new Phi Alpha Theta members. For those of you who may arrive late, I'm Professor Karp. Uh, now we're going to transition to the graduation portion of the program. To give some special remarks to our graduates, we'll have an address from our department chair, Professor Tiffany Jones. Professor Jones has served as our department chair since 2016 and has led us to new heights, even as she continues to teach courses in world history and African history. Originally from South Africa, Dr. Jones earned her doctorate from Queen's University in Canada, and she speaks several languages, including English, Afrikaans, and Zulu. So without any further ado, Dr. Jones, you have the floor. Thank you. And I am so honored, as everybody else has said, to join the chorus of voices who are congratulating each and every one of you at this momentous event. So graduation is actually a time for celebration, and certainly you should celebrate. Um, but it's also a time for reflection. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time to be a little sentimental and make some comments about the significance of what you've accomplished here. So I vividly remember when I first filled out my college application, which was many, many years ago, and I had no idea what I was doing, what was expected from me, and I felt completely intimidated by the large buildings and the grounds of the university campus. Um, I was completely overwhelmed and I had no idea what to expect. Um, after all, there were times when I thought I would never graduate high school and I don't think my family ever thought that at times too. So, uh, and I never mind did I think I was going to end up at university. So if you can remember when you first filled out your college application or stepped into the first class on that first day of your university degree, whether it was here at CSUSB or at a different institution, if you were anything like me, you probably can remember feeling very excited, tentative, and maybe a little afraid. Okay, I was a lot of um, you were probably not entirely sure what to expect or where this would take you. You probably remember seeing your first course syllabus, right? Writing your first paper, engaging in your first debate. Maybe you remember your first visit to the library or the student union. And when you met your next best friend, maybe, or hung out with people who loved history in the same way you do. Maybe there were a few or a lot of long nights. I was trying to figure out books. That's why I have my book background. Um, many articles that you had to read and likely many exhausting moments when you thought about how you were going to get it all done. Um, you know, all of that while trying to balance your work and home life with your school life. 
you probably wrote and rewrote a lot of papers and that large History 594, now History 5850 paper seemed so daunting at first, but you got it done. And I'm sure there were days where you questioned whether you were smart enough, resilient enough, and whether what you were doing was all worth it. Let me assure you, it was. So a university degree is more than just taking courses or learning facts and career advancement. And while that certainly is part of it, the process of earning your degree is about time management, learning how to learn, being open to new ideas, making mistakes, picking yourself up after those mistakes, uh, reflecting on your limitations, your strengths, your weaknesses, challenging yourself, learning about who you are and how you fit into the world, and preparing you to make decisions and navigate the various intricacies of life. Getting your degree is a difficult but rewarding experience. And it's not an end, it's a beginning. And every obstacle you overcame, every sacrifice you made, and every minute of hard work and dedication will pay off in your life in so many countless ways that I'm sure one day you will think back to the day that you decided to sit down and fill out your university application as being one of the best decisions of your life. The fact that you have all completed your history degree is also significant. Us historians do not simply document the past. We analyze it, we assess it, we debate it, we reconstruct, and we peer into its depths so that in the end, we can understand who we are. We are the social critics of the world. We piece together sometimes very obscure and abstract pieces of evidence. We muddle through the gray areas of people's lives. We debate about the significance of different issues and evidence, and we reflect on the past to inform us for the present. We often wade through shocking, and disturbing historical events, many times finding it difficult to set our own emotions aside in order to find the origins and significance of those events. And we become the voices of reason in tumultuous times. And this is not easy. We study history not simply to avoid repeating the mistakes of the past, but as Nuval Noah Harari argues, and this is his quote, the study of history aims above all to make us aware of possibilities we don't normally consider. Historians study the past, not in order to repeat it, but in order to be liberated from it. Now, the fact that you have completed your history degree in these very difficult and tumultuous times is even more significant. One day you'll likely tell your children or grandchildren about the years that when you were in university and the days of 2020, when we were all facing a massive global pandemic, great economic instability, a volatile election, raising, uh, raging wildfires, distance learning, power outages, intense racial injustices and rising social justice movements, and yes, even toilet paper shortages, murder hornets, outlandish conspiracy theories, and strange monoliths that pop up in obscure places. We are living through one of the most notable eras of crisis in human history. But if we have learned anything from history, it is that humanity can rise up out of the worst situations and come up with the best innovations and ideas. You and your generation are testament to the resilience and strength of humanity. And I am completely humbled to witness your success here today. And if I can just take a few more moments to give you a few words of advice, take the time to reflect on and celebrate your tremendous success, but don't ever stop challenging yourself. Take the energy that you put into your degree and the various skills that you have learned and use them to keep learning. Use them to reach your goals and make this world a better place. Show the world who you are and your resilience. Be creative, fight for change and a better society for all. And overall, don't give up. 
as historians, we know it is the determined that eventually succeed, that challenges can be overcome, that it's the little everyday actions and changes that end up making major overall differences over time. Graduates with history degrees end up earning these. And yes, that is true. As Paul, as Paul Sturtevant points out, and this is his quote, you get to decide where your path lies. Your degree is a springboard to one of the many fields that value the skills you learned in college. So each and every one of you should be proud of this immense accomplishment. You have graduated from a stellar institution. CSUSB history department excels in so many ways that I can't even go into here today. Our faculty produce excellence in their respective fields of expertise each and every day, and they make my job as chair very easy. They provide leadership as scholars and as campus leaders and provide top-notch guidance and instruction to our students. And this fall, we've also been pleased to welcome two new faculty members to the history department, Dr. Michael Karp and Dr. Daisy Ocampo, both of whom have spoken um, at this program. And our department also hosts a visiting Egyptologist every year and is one of the few to offer students a BA in public history and a museum studies certificate. Our Phi Alpha Theta chapter has been awarded five best chapter awards. Our history journal wins a Gerald D. Nash award almost every year. And you are joining a wonderful group of CSUSB history alumni who have gone on to be important contributors to society. And if you have ever visited our alumni mentorship page on our website, you'll notice that so many of our history alumni go on to prestigious graduate schools. They win awards, they become leaders in the community, they become educators, researchers, lawyers, managers, writers, artists, editors, activists, administrators, public historians, and business members, just to name a few. CSUSB history students work exceptionally hard to complete all the requirements for their degree, and they are excellent ambassadors for us in the community and the world at large. And we know you will be too. And I know I speak for each and every faculty member here at the history department when I say that we are exceptionally proud of you, and we want to hear all about your future accomplishments. So stay safe stay in touch with us and let us know all about the new exciting challenges and successes that you're sure to encounter in the future so that we can add your story to our alumni page too. So right now we're gonna move on to our slideshow recognition of our graduates.
congratulations. Congratulations again to, to all the graduates. Uh, please give yourself a virtual or a real round of applause. There is, hasn't been much rowdiness in the program. So if anybody wants to unmute and give a hoot. Congratulations. Congratulations, Woo! everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah. Woo! Congratulations. I'm Jeremy Murray. I teach courses on world history uh, and East Asia. And it is my honor to give some closing remarks and acknowledgments. First off, uh, let's thank Professor Jacob Blosser uh, for joining us. Dr. Blosser, given your various leadership roles, including national president of Phi Alpha Theta and your continuing work as a history professor, we know you're quite busy. So we thank you for taking the time to join us and for speaking with our students. In addition, I'd like to acknowledge our department chair, Professor Tiffany Jones, for her remarks this evening and her leadership of the department through a remarkably challenging semester and calendar year. We're fortunate to have her leadership. Thank you to all the history department faculty who spoke in the program and all uh, who are in attendance. And a special acknowledgement goes to professors Michael Karp and Mark Robinson, who planned and coordinated this event. So thank you all. Uh, for making this possible. Uh, let me express our appreciation and acknowledgement to all parents, loved ones, family, and friends who have been a crucial part of our student success. You are all important members of the California State University San Bernardino community, and we thank you all uh, for all that you do. I hope that you students will remember uh, to keep in touch, keep in touch with your faculty as you embark on new adventures. We love to hear from our alumni, whether it's to ask for a letter of recommendation, to celebrate a milestone in your education or professional life, uh, to stop by our office hours, or just drop a line to let us know how you're doing. This is a community that you can continue to call your own as alumni, and your achievements, you all, as part of this community that we are celebrating today are a huge part of what makes this such a great place. This concludes our program. Thank you all for attending and have a great evening. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, everybody.